Folks, here is uh, the CEO of Uber. Now, Uber has really uh, worked hard to uh, reform their image as um, as not just a, a business enterprise built on um, uh, law breaking and overpowering uh, local officials across the country and the world, for yep. that matter. Spying on journalists. Uh, spying on journalists. Labor arbitrage. Labor arbitrage. Congestion. Uh, congestion. I mean, all of these things. Um, it, they are working overtime to change their image. And... Um, <laughs> They, I think, probably need to have like a new uh, crisis uh, 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 public relations team. Uh, here is the uh, CEO of uh, of Uber. Is this a name, Dara? Um, I don't know how to pronounce this. This name. is the new CEO. It's the new CEO, right? Yeah. Uh, this one ask you. Axios is HBO uh, show. Uh, I want to ask you uh, about Saudi Arabia. Uh, last year, you chose not to go to the big Saudi Arabian government investment conference uh, after the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. And you said that you wanted to wait for more facts to emerge. Uh, we're now at a point subsequent to that. The CIA has assessed that the Saudi government, including the crown prince, had a role in that murder. You also decided not to go this year. Did you not go this year because of the Khashoggi situation? We had a board meeting at the same time. Well, that's convenient, but you're the CEO. You probably could have rescheduled <laughs> that. We scheduled board meetings years and years ahead. It wasn't... Uh, would yeah. you, if your board meeting had not been that day, would you have gone? I don't know if I would have. You also, Saudi Arabia is your fifth largest shareholder. You have uh, the head of the Sovereign Wealth Fund on your board. Do you believe he should stand for re-election to the board? I think he's been a very constructive board member, Yasser has. Uh, and I personally have valued his input greatly. Uh, it's up to him whether he wants to stand for re-election. But, well, but from your opinion, he represents and works for a government which you believe had a role in the murder of a journalist who was a U.S. resident. Should that person be on the board of a U.S. company? I think that government uh, said that they made a mistake. Well, they um, made a mistake and then somebody's dead. Well, listen, it's, it's, it, it's a serious mistake. We've made mistakes too, right, oh with self-driving. Uh, and we stop driving and we're recovering from that mistake. So I think that people make mistakes. It doesn't mean that they can never be forgiven. I think they've taken it seriously. And the, CIA, my so the CIA didn't suggest that they made a mistake and that it was an oversight. Like with self-driving, that was a, basically a bad censor, correct? This yes. was, the CIA yeah. suggested that the crown prince had a role in ordering an assassination. It's a different thing. You guys didn't intentionally didn't, run somebody over. I didn't right? read that part of the CIA report. You're, you're obviously deeper in it. But I think from a Saudi perspective, they're just like any other shareholder, right? It's we, now we're a public company. Anyone can invest in our company if they choose to do so. And they're a big investor, just like you could be a big investor as well. I don't think I can be as big as the Saudis. <laughs> I don't That'll think. That'll be hard. That'll be tough. Wow. Oh, uh, the day after the interview, uh, Dara Karshwa, he, I, I may be, I'm not pronouncing his name correctly. I apologize. Sent an email to Mike Allen and to Dan Primek to clarify his comments on Jamal Khashoggi, because if you uh, missed that, he said it was a mistake, but a serious mistake when the crown prince ordered Khashoggi to be chopped up into small pieces uh, and, and killed viciously because he was a critic of the Saudi regime. That was not just a mistake. It was a serious mistake. Like a big oopsie. Yeah, a big like a big, big oopsie. I mean, to be fair, right? I mean, it was a big, big oopsie, to be fair. And, you know, uh, people make mistakes. Mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, I'm not going to get explicit about it because in this country you go to jail for something like that, but I may have mistakenly ordered uh, someone to be uh, murdered in a vicious, horrible way. And you, you learn from your mistakes. You move on. Uh, the, well, they Uber, Ubered a car afterwards. That's, exactly. Yeah. Then I Ubered a car. And now, uh, this is his uh, response. I said something in the moment that I do not believe. Why? When it comes to Jamal Khashoggi, his murder was reprehensible and should not be forgotten or excused. So, I guess maybe they do have a decent crisis public relations firm, but they just need to have them do some like pre-crisis training. Right. The, the movie Fargo by the Coen Brothers is about a mistake like this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Except not with the Saudi government, Gosh. which has assets in every major company in America. I mean, but ultimately, th doesn't this just illustrate that it doesn't matter how powerful, rich, 
uh, what executive level you are, there are certain red lines that you cannot cross in America. And I think right now, Saudi Arabia is a very prickly situation for most politicians and leaders. They just, you're, you're dealing with a, a man who's ruling this government, government in, in this family in Saudi Arabia, who seems to be less thoughtful about his approach uh, to foreign relations. Makes a lot of mistakes. Makes a lot of mistakes. Um, but also, I mean, this is, there, there's been like a norm, right? In terms of, of diplomacy, in terms of where politicians are willing to put pressure. I, I would even go, I would even go a, a, a little bit further and, and say, we have a problem with uh, money mm. and we have a problem with fossil fuel. That's right. Because um, this is just an example of, you know, uh, this guy's being cowed because of the investment that the Saudis have in um, uh, in his company and probably the political leverage they have with other countries in terms of like, we want our investment to succeed. Right. Therefore, these laws that you're passing that are to protect your consumers or your workers, uh, we don't like. Then I would also add like, you know, this um, in the past week, we've seen stories of U.S. weapons that are supposedly um, not uh, to be sent to uh, Yemen uh, right. showing up and being offloaded from Saudi ships and uh, UAE ships, I think. Um, and this is all part of, of the same where, you know, the there is no, um, you know, people uh, there are just we have just too many sociopaths mm -hmm. who are willing to um, allow for. And, and, and frankly, I think, you know, um, I don't like to compare uh, mistakes, as it were, but mm -hmm. like um, thousands upon thousands have mista been mistakes in Yemen, mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, equally, if I would say, you know, probably more egregious in many respects um, than what happened with Khashoggi. Both are horrible. I, I don't know how well, you... Khashoggi was an untouchable. Exactly. I mean, he came from a family that was very powerful uh, with a legacy of, I mean, we, we go back, to just Google without us pause google khashoggi and his family go down like a wikipedia you know deep dive into the early 80s and the ron contra affair and, oh adnan khashoggi yes yeah, yeah. Well, exactly oh, right. yes so i mean it's it's he was untouchable and i think ultimately you know we have to 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 just figure out like is this where what is that line right now like where this is where I, I look at like the democrats versus republicans republicans have a line that's like further they're they're not willing to go after the the people who give them money but like there's a line that's for democrats like a little bit more towards um democracy like leaning towards democracy just a just sliver. a little exactly. bit do you know what i'm saying like yes. i can't i don't know what that line is like whose money don't they take right. that the republicans take well, I don't know as like a, a whole, whole I don't know as a whole, but I think there are, you know, more people less willing to take that money in the Democratic Party than in the Republican. Party. Of course. Yes. But I but I, I don't think it's, you know, it's marginal difference. Do you, guys, okay. do you guys watch Silicon Valley? Sometimes this is literally just the plot from the most recent season of Silicon Valley that I'm watching right now, where Richard Hendricks gets offered a billion dollars by this guy from the Chilean ruling class. And it turns out that all his money is like tied up with Pinochet and like mines where a ton of people died. And then he has to like decide if he's going to take the money or not. But like, there's obviously that's the way the system is set up. You're incentivized to take the dirty money. And if you look around who's getting money from who in the tech sector, it's, a wash in dirty blood money. It's total blood money. And that's why they're into this crypto thing, because it, it's a way for them to cover the fact that they're taking dirty blood money. You know, whether it's a Russian oligarch investing, you know, billions in Facebook, causing the explosion of Facebook almost overnight or or Saudi money that's, you know, being funneled. And, I mean, or Israeli tech companies. I mean, this is and they also have a side gig of like spying on you. Right. Yeah. And I'm not sure what we can do about that other than continue to expose that fact and make it harder and harder for the tech industry to brand itself as somehow progressive. Well, I also think, I, I, I mean, I also think, too, that um, if you, I mean, and I, I don't want to get too, too sidetracked here, but I do think that one of the arguments about the, the big anti-monopoly pushes that we're looking at is to diminish the ability of any one player to have that type of control. And you can apply this to just about everything. You can say, you know, we're allowing uh, Saudi Arabia has this 
uh, monopoly on our energy resources. Mm-hmm. And and if we were to follow the the sort of the uh, the conceptual notion of that, it would be to disaggregate that uh, those resources and have renewables that are far more accessible to everyone. And it's very hard to like, I'm going to corner the sun or I'm going to corner the wind. You're not going to have, you're going to have, uh, you know, large companies that do this, but you're not going to have um, uh, these same type of behemoths. There's always going to be an option like, okay, you cannot withhold to, from us the sun. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just not going to happen. Oh, yeah. There's um, lots of things that could be done on a policy level. I was just talking about like us sitting here in this studio right now. Right. Well, and I mean, and, and the other side of it is you were saying that these tech companies have liberal cover. I mean, Uber brought in David Pluff over oh. Obama. Well, you remember at the DNC. Oh, oh, my God. I cannot. Ugh. OK, so the DNC was in Philadelphia. <laughs> Philadelphia. At this stadium, which absolutely had like zero public transportation that was functioning on a normal pace. You could for get a there. You could you get could. there. But it was a real thing, though. Right. And and you could only take and it was raining. I remember the day the day of um, the big speech. The cabs would drop you off at one end of right. like and then you'd have to walk this like massive parking lot. But the Ubers could come right up. Right. Because of all the Democratic officials who sat on their board. And and of course, you know, like yeah. for me. Curbed is my is my go to. So we used in our campaign because we wanted it's the tax it's the official taxi app, but um, I mean they had a tent they were major sponsors this is just three years ago and to see how far right Uber has gone I don't know if any of these people are oh they were there they Uber was right there at the beginning yeah publicly how far Mm. they've gone because now it's like it's like being with charter schools Democrats can't be you know associated with charter schools or Uber. So I'm curious to see how the David Axelrods and the and the they David Pluffs sure. and the McKenzie types that are advising Pete Buttigieg, you know, how they're going to line up with with Uber this time around. I'm 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 sure it will not inhibit them one one iota. It would yeah, be my guess. Care. But uh, 